Do you have hair? Manscaped. Do you have hair down there? Manscaped. Do you care about your hair down there? Sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped, the pioneers for your shaving needs for all parts of your body. With their Performance Package 4.0 kit, they offer the most bountiful bundle for your bodacious bod. With precision engineered tools to make shaving quick, easy, and pain free. An all in one grooming solution for all your parts. The Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and cordless. It literally can't get easier to keep up with your daily grooming. With skin safe technology that makes sure your sensitive regions aren't in danger if you got butter fingers like I do. Rinse it clean and there's no mess in your bathroom. But for me, I forget to shave my nose hairs. It's actually really embarrassing. So I use the Weed Whacker to keep those bad boys in check. And it's got all the same skin safe functionality as the lawnmower. Don't forget the Crop Preserver, an anti chafing deodorant to keep your family jewels from sweating and sticking. Wait, hold, that's a thing? Well, that's actually a good idea. Everyone with those has that problem. I like that, actually. Do you want to go from caveman to 007? Or maybe you just need a gift this holiday season. Then this is the package for your package. And when you buy the performance package, you get two free gifts, a shed travel bag and the anti-chafing boxer briefs. This is more of a gift for your partner if you've been doing your squats. Go to manscaped.com to get 20% off and free international shipping when you use code negative at checkout. You've heard of 16 that I covered on my channel. Of course, you've heard of Total Drama Island and you may have even heard of Stoked. But what I didn't know about was GarageBand. Yes, all of these series are made by Fresh TV, a studio that of which has a lot of smart people behind it. People who take inspiration from Craig McCracken or Gendy Tartakovsky, who are legitimately passionate about making entertaining animated series. Literally all the shows I mentioned are great shows that still hold up today. I hadn't heard of GarageBand until my partner told me because for some reason she grew up with like a whole slew of shows that of which I had never heard of prior to meeting her. As Fresh TV kept creating shows, not all of them became hits. And GarageBand feels like one of those shows where if you watched it while it aired, you'd think everyone knew about it. But if you didn't, you'd think no one knew about it. And it's an in-between zone of popularity. The era between 2013 and 2015 were years where Cartoon Network were really trying to get its stride back. We were in the middle of regular show at Adventure Time, and we had Uncle Grandpa and Steven Universe and We Bear Bears. It was a pretty good time. But it was also this time where Cartoon Network fans were splitting. The fans who grew up with the more classic shows like Teen Titans or Ed and Nettie were starting to grow up. Their priorities in life were finally changing as they were old enough to be drafted. So for people like me who were having to deal with adulthood right around the corner, we weren't really privy to what was happening on Cartoon Network during this time. And we were also well into the lifespan of streaming services, mostly Netflix, since that start they started streaming in 2007 and started really gaining traction around this time. So the landscape of how people were consuming TV was changing. And plenty of people didn't have access to Cartoon Network in the way that they used to. But now we're in a time where all these shows that largely went under the radar are slowly becoming nostalgic. And it's worth covering them. Not only for people like you who watched the TV show while it was airing, but also for people like me who didn't get a chance to see it and wants to bridge the gap in between myself and people who honestly aren't even that much younger than me, if I'm gonna be honest. Like, the, the, t the difference is like a couple years. Their screams were so high-pitched, my dog started barking. My goodness. Less drumming, my calluses will finally heal. I guarantee you, if I was younger and saw that, I wouldn't understand the joke. Honestly, it's not even a joke. Just that's just that's just a thing that happens. So you have Corey who comes up with the wild and crazy ideas to make their band known. Honestly, accurate. You gotta really put yourself out there if you wanna be successful. And you have his older sister who is only focused on getting Nick Mallory to notice him, even if it hurts Corey's chances of being seen. What's the one thing Garage Band never does? Give up? Surrender? Back down? Garage Band never quits! We can do any of those other things, 
but not quitting. Before you start something, you can surrender, you can give up, you can back down, but if you're in the middle of something, you can't quit. It's a philosophy I live by too. I could have surrendered all my stock in this weird unknown company that's trying to change yak hair into a beverage, but I didn't. I'm already $5,000 into this company that no one knows about, and I can't quit, even though I want to. Looks like Nick's found a new leading lady. And it's not you. I'm sorry, excuse me, hold on. You chose a green apple soda? Gross. This is Nick Mallory, the coolest guy you've ever seen. You can tell because he only refers to himself in the third person, a classic method to get everyone to think you're cool. Nick Mallory loves surprises. Just like me, negative legend. That's how I had everyone drooling over Negative Legend back in school. And you should subscribe to Negative Legend, that's me. Have you watched a bunch of Negative Legends videos? Then why haven't you subscribed to Negative Legend? That's still me. What you need to know is that the songs in this show was only like 30 seconds long, but the majority of them are amazing. How is this show so unknown when the songs are so good? Did you know I used to have a crush on Corey? No, no I didn't actually. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Our music needs to be live and in your face. You can get in my face again if you like. Wait. It's missing something. You can get in my face again if you like. Wait. They're too young. Now I'm uncomfortable. You can not do anything suggestive or sexual with me since we are underage. You also got Khan, who's basically just a big guy that farts all the time. If you could manage to squeeze comedy relief into a comedy show, that's this guy. And this is Ken, who is supposed to be the super smart guy who is very intelligent, and you probably just don't understand how meta he is because he's just so smart. He gives off the vibe of one of those people who's probably a Reddit mod, but he's not quite an incel. Not joking, the recycle animation is the older sister getting so angry she writes in her diary, and then Corey steals it and uses it for the lyrics for their next song. Which is funny, but also messed up. Like, come on, dude. So we're poxed. Are we not human? Do we not bleed when we- Wait. Uh, do kids nowadays even know what chicken pox are or what chicken pox parties were? Like, wow, I, I, I know that a lot of things get outdated, but I usually think of like technology, not diseases. Kinda wish I hadn't invited the school party critic now. Good party space, check. Original theme, check. Oh, there's Chris McLean slash Jude. I was wondering where he was. It's, all the land. <gasps> it's Bobby Blue, and he hasn't aged a bit. Bobby Blue. Get your parents to Wait, that's good. Quick, write that down. Write that down. This is Lainey, who is the alt girl that has to deal with being the only source of estrogen in a sausage party, and also has a crush on Corey if you didn't figure that out yourself. Also, everyone thinks Lainey is a dude for some reason. Oh, forget it. I'll just grow a beard. The winner's circle is only for winners and the super cute flag girl who hands them the trophy. Well, maybe we're gonna be all of the above. Minus the cute girl. Nice. This is a show where it's comedy first. Anything goes, doesn't matter. You just gotta go with it because nothing is off the table. Does something not make sense? Yes, it does. It makes sense because it's funny. Screw you. Con drumming because it creates a genius trance with math flying off the sticks? Totally normal. They accidentally challenged aliens to a rock concert with a cornfield symbol? Totally normal. Congratulations. Looks like my base proposal. Whoa, dude. What happened to the background? The floor is so pixelated, they literally just, did they literally just zoom in on it to have the proportions fit better? Not only is it comedy for- Ah. Uh -huh. Not only is it comedy first, but they will launch jokes at you at such breakneck pace. They spend zero time trying to get to the next joke. If you miss a joke, don't worry, another one's coming. I'm not so good at math, I've been failing it for like, how many hands is six fingers? And trigonometrina Adelie. I wonder where Trina is. I think I need a soda, Mina. The kind that stunts your growth in junk. All of these were in the same episode. I give you the Memory Eraser 500. One whack, a uh, treatment, and all memory of us being rejected will be gone. Dude, I use that all the time to forget my troubled and turbulent childhood. But don't forget that they don't tell you about the side effects. Pain. 
Speaking of which, their big enemies are literally just gender swaps of themselves. Weird thing is that at the end of every episode, Cory has a big self-reflective speech, which feels like a lazy way to add a lesson at the end of a show to make it educational. Do we still have to make shows educational? I mean, like, is that still a thing? I don't know. Think we got enough jugs? No, I think you need bigger jugs. Jugs about this big. That's the joke. <laughs> And we were so in love that we ignored our friends, broke up the band, and had a fight about nothing. Why can't that be us? It, it can. We just need to start a band so that we can break up. The, the, the band, not us. <laughs> An aspect of making a good show is almost solely in how good the characters are. And the band are all foils of each other. Corey is a thinker and risk taker. Lainey is pragmatic and prefers to think things through. Khan is kind of dumb, while Kin is smart to a fault. Their characters don't have a lot of depth, but they have enough for the sake of a comedy show. Even Trina and her lackey friend Mina are foils, a nerd and a prep. I love foils. Their interactions are always fun. It's a great way to make a show really entertaining. More popcorn? Nick needs to go to the little Nick's room. Wait, are you saying Nick is also your gender? And they made a bathroom tailor made for you? People care more about Nick than they do the transgender and non-binary community. Wait, no, that makes sense actually, yeah. The real question is, if you have all these people who are supposedly opposites of each other, how do you get them to work together? Usually people who are opposites fight each other. And in this case, Khan and Kin are siblings, so they have to be together. While Lainey likes Cory and puts up with his overly ambitious ways. And Cory is a go-getter. So long as people are willing to go with his ideas, everything is usually fine with him. But I can show you the natural ways of the vegans. <laughs> Oh, so this is how vegans are made. I guess they're just victims to the plants and not the other way around. Which means there's only one way to save the vegans. We have to destroy all the plants. Being vegan means wearing leaves for clothes and never using soap for some reason. No oh, so anime fans at conventions are just vegans. I get it now. It's just ruined. Well, whatever the worst burn of your life was, imagine it just got set to you. Is... <laughs> Did, did they just reuse the same voice actors for the Newmans, but had them slightly feminize their voices? You know, I'm pretty sure the reason this show wasn't successful was largely because it aired at inconvenient times for most people and Cartoon Network being in an awkward period, but I'm afraid that people may have thought it's a ripoff of Phineas and Ferb. Their songs literally every episode, they have an older sister who is trying to stop them while also being obsessed with a boy. On the surface, this show is very similar to Phineas and Ferb, even though, if I'm honest, the comedy and writing is just so different that I didn't even think of comparing it until, like, episode 8 or something. Okay, well, I guess that's not actually that far into the show. This show is very much the Cartoon Network version of Phineas and Ferb, and since Cartoon Network is just usually weirder in general, people were probably not super stoked about this show because of that comparison. Uh, do you wanna... <laughs> Like that, that's too gross, and I'm sorry you had to see it. Usually I'd cut that out because I don't believe in making you suffer as I have suffered. However, I feel it was pertinent to the point I'm trying to make. If you aren't a hardcore Cartoon Network fan, like I am, I would not blame you for dipping watching the show after seeing that scene, because like, ew, where um, they go to an amusement park Trina's covered in vomit. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, she grabs me in his tongue and... Uh. <laughs> anyway, you know what's the most unrealistic part of this entire show? They managed to write a new song every episode and then perform it flawlessly without any practice whatsoever. They focus so much on the lyrics from Trina's diary. What about the sheet music? They're just freestyling all this and then having it work all together, like, without any practice? <laughs> These kids really are prodigies. That's why Corey's considered a demigod, because he just, like, comes up with these riffs, and then Khan's just like, okay, and then everyone else follows. Helping you feels like my heart is totally hugging itself. Katrina! 
<laughs> you know, the more this show goes on, the weirder it gets. I know you will if I get called a little sweetie again. I gotta admit, you make a cute girl, bro. Number one! For the love of God, please just realize Lainey is a girl and start dating. Number two! Corey, if you like dudes in dresses, I know this awesome thing called femboys. When it comes to the show, I imagine you can relate to it well if you didn't get along with your siblings. And that's probably because I got along really well with my sister. So it's hard for me to really relate to this show as much as other people can. Like me, who has two brothers. I love being a middle child. Don't lick my open mouth. Why can't you be in a maid outfit? <laughs> we can put her in the maid outfit. We can put her in the maid outfit! What's nice about this show is that, yes, they mostly do rock and roll, but they have several episodes where they branch out and do an entirely different genre of music. And I appreciate it a lot. It keeps it fresh. And my favorite genre of music is rock, so, you know. If it worked for her, it can work for us. Crush Band is going straight. You know what? You're right. I'm going straight, too. Gosh, I suddenly feel like going to the gym and harassing women. Disclaimer, this is just a joke. Being straight doesn't automatically make you a gym rat who harasses women. Stop being so sensitive and take a joke. What, are you triggered or something? I guess you're just not a red pill like I am. You know, another reason it must have been hard to get fake people into this show, have you tried actually explaining an episode of the, this show to someone? I mean, let me show you. There's an episode where Corey gets stuck in an elevator. And so he gets so upset that he summons like an elevator to the netherworld. Then they meet the Lord of Elevator Music and that is trapping elevator music who wants to trap and kill elevator music. In order to, for them to escape, they have to like prove that they aren't elevator music. It just sounds weird and it doesn't really make sense unless you watch the episode, then it does. During the time this show released, we were seeing a big change in what people wanted from their cartoons. People want progression. Maybe not a big sudden and grand story arc, but just nudging things towards something bigger. And don't get me wrong, I like shows like this where it's a good comedic formula that works, but there's nothing beyond that. And it had to put up a fight against Steven Universe and Adventure Time, which were showing to everyone that a show that's a little more mature with more structure was incredibly successful. And most shows during this time that couldn't deliver on that more were just weren't succeeding. Even good shows were being canned because of it. This show could have really been helped by focusing on Lainey and Corey's relationship just a little more than just having it be a joke, or you know, just something else. The characters in this show remain the same the entire time. Even having a show like Ladybug where they just pretend like something will change but never actually deliver has shown that is still effective. I'm not saying they gotta change the entire soul of the show, but if they wanted to be renewed for more than one season, they needed more elements to keep things interesting for the audience. What I'm really trying to say is, you need to make a show that gives the audience a reason to come back. This show's reason to come back is the comedy and the music. But you can find comedy and music on your phone or on the internet. This show is good if it just so happens to be on and you're not sure what to watch. If you wanted to watch it for the music, you could most likely find it uploaded online. Everything in this show is good, but it's just not enough. All of us have loved you from the start. The Mallory and Riff and Clans have dropped. Why does this sound familiar? Hmm. Why is it a trope in American cartoons for the characters to shrink down and go inside someone's body and have to rush out of there before they revert to normal size? Like, where did this come from? It came from a book, right? But why is it a trope? There's one episode where Lainey has to be lead singer of the band because there's a girl power concert and the headliner is a total poser who's a total sellout. And so she gets her own song that's full of rage and is probably one of the top three songs in this show. And is also when Corey admits that Lainey is a girl, but I couldn't tell if he was pretending because he still thinks she's a guy or not in order, just in order to like get perks. I mean, Kim and Khan sing too, but it's meh. Your seatbelts and airbags make me feel safe and picking me up made me feel special. <laughs> Looks like Nick is kinda into dating a car. Ugh, car guys. There isn't even a joke. This is how some of you guys are like. Should we put sparkles in the cards? When people open them, the sparkles will go everywhere. Just like love. 
I know, the sparkles are the worst. Like, I have to vacuum every time you come over. Wait, why don't you have sparkles? Put the maid outfit back on. At episode 25, they start beelining towards the obvious developments between Cory and Lainey, and they have their first kiss while trying to eat falling beard flakes. Don't ask. Or just watch the episode, I don't know. But here's the thing. Cory still thinks that Lainey is a fella, so I'm pretty sure he's very bisexual. Can you believe how lame these gamer boys are? Nick digs games. Gamer dudes and gamer girls. <laughs> Yeah, same here. Gamer girls are so good. I'm so into gamer girls, I donated my life savings to them on Twitch. I'm sure she'll notice me someday. And yes, even Trina makes progress because they parody the 2012 Mayan calendar end of the world. All this time and I never told you that I love you. I'm glad you didn't tell me. It would have been awkward for both of us. And then the aliens come back to Earth with a meteor in order to get revenge? And Trina doesn't want to be saved by Cory as he attempts to save the world. And so Trina is okay with Mina getting crushed by a meteor. And so the aliens enlist her. And then Cory goes to the meteor to have a rock battle to stop them. Problem is that Trina dumped their instruments on Earth so they can't win. And only so that her and Nick are the sole survivors of Earth. Cory admits defeat, Trina is so happy she writes in her diary about how epically happy she is, and then Mina shows up with the instruments and chews out Trina for being an absolutely awful friend, and honestly good for her. Their plan is to rock so hard that the meteor breaks apart from the epic power of their song, effectively saving the Earth, and they land safely on Earth because... Whatever, just roll with it. Cory and Lainey never officially become a thing, but Cory does realize he doesn't need to steal lyrics from his sister anymore. It was pretty clear to the creators that this show was not going to be renewed. So they gave the fans just a little bit of something to get them satisfied. Not enough. <laughs> not enough satisfaction. Even if the kiss was accidental, at least we got one kiss. Barely. This is not the commentating. This is not the commentary version of this episode. <laughs> this is the blooper version. And my partner has been searching the wiki for like a bunch of things the creators have said after the show has finished. And so like, if you just want to read a bunch about the world and characters, go look there because there's just a bunch of just random information. Some of them are really weird. And sometimes I think it's just the fans that are over extrapolating on certain things. But there are other things that are just legitimately just straight out of the words of the creators. So if you're a mega fan, I'd highly recommend going to read it. But what happened to it? There's several reasons this show could have been dropped. And it's not just because there was a more popular series to work on. I can't find the time this show aired, like during the day. From my like memory, I just feel like it was airing at like 2 p.m. Two or three. In the middle of the week, like a Wednesday. Middle of the week on two, a uh, two, two thirty. Yeah. That is a bad time, which is the re which is the explanation I was going to talk about. Where if it's slotted for an, an uncomfortable time, where there's just not a lot of people who are going to watch it, it's bound to fail. It was made just to fill in time, even though it's a good show. Not only that, but during this time, the shows that were really popular at least had some semblance of maybe character development or world development or something more. There was just more depth in the shows in general. Adventure Time was well into its life when the show was airing and same with the regular show. Steven Universe was also there and these three big hitters showed that fans during this time wanted cartoons with more depth. I also feel that during this time, Cartoon Network was still trying to recover from CN Real when they tried to add live action shows to the whole thing. That happened in between 2009 and 2010. It feels really weird that it was only a year. It felt so much longer than that. But GarageBand aired between 2013 and I think 2015. And the fan base of Cartoon Network, myself included, dipped really hard when CN Real came out. And Cartoon Network had to spend a lot of time just fixing all the damage that it had done. I know for me that during this time, I was only tuning into Cartoon Network to watch Adventure Time and that's it. Literally nothing else. GarageBand is a great show that aired during a bad time for the company. Not only for the company, but also for the fans. I have no doubt it was shows like this that got a whole new demographic of people to start watching shows on Cartoon Network. And GarageBand is one of those shows that helped reestablish Cartoon Network's reputation. But it just wasn't in a good environment to be a smash hit. 
But it's not about whether a show was successful, it's about whether or not it influenced the people who watched it. All that matters is if it touched the hearts of the people and inspired its viewers. Maybe this show pushed people to learn an instrument. And in the end, that's all that really matters. We're so focused on money and getting renewed for seasons that we forget the real purpose of these shows. And it's, a, and it's these shows that are a form of art that should be treated as such. Thanks for coming out, everyone. Jerry, Jerry, you make me do, and you took all my love.